This week on the Spotlight, we go back to the early 90s with Ozzy Guillen. And then we also go back to the Isaiah Thomas era of the Pistons. And then we also have some basketball with Phil Jackson from the Championship Bulls. And we got to talk about a trade because Jose Quintana has been sent to the Cubs for four Cub prospects. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. From wherever Chicago sports teams are making news, it's the 29th year of the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Sports Spotlight. They have tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and more, 108th in Kedzie. Lansing Floral Shop, open 8 a.m. daily. Custom silk flowers, Bridgewater candles, great flowers, 708 474 1212. A great floral shop, Lansing Floral. You've got to get to the Ballpark Pub for trivia. Alternate Mondays at 8 p.m., the next one, July 24th. Come eat, drink, and play on Pershing. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Hupfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more, dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. You've got to get to Dr. Sherman Clay, chiropractor. Gentle adjusting, most insurance accepted. Massage therapy, too. Walk-ins are welcome. Call 773-324-4325. That's HEAL, Dr. Sherman Clay. You've got to get to the Wise Owl at Van Buren and Racine. Pizzas, pork sliders, Cuban sandwiches, carrot soup, elote, burgers, tacos, salads, and more. Great cocktails and great bartenders. A tremendous array at the Wise Owl, Van Buren and Racine. See you there. You've got to get to Matt Anthony Sports Bar and Grill, 3350 West 47th Street. Serving La Coco's Pizza, always good. A wide variety of sandwiches and the full bar. And my trivia game every other Friday, starting at about 545. So good stuff at Matt Anthony. I'll see you over there. We'll have fun. We'll eat, drink, and play on a Friday late afternoon, early evening. We're back on the spotlight and the Cubs and Sox with a blockbuster trade. Jose Quintana goes to the Cubs, the starter they needed, in exchange for four big prospects. Outfielder Eloy Jimenez, pitcher Dylan Cease, first baseman Matt Rose, and infielder Brian Flate. And boy, this uh, let's, let's break it down. Let's start by looking at Jose Quintana. Really a solid, solid player and a great guy to talk to. A really good citizen. 170 starts. But a rather mediocre 51 and 54 record. And the reason is the lack of run support. For whatever reason, they just weren't able to back him. He was pitching uh, from behind a lot. And there was so much pressure to be perfect. 65 no decisions. That's just an incredibly high number. And here he is knocking out six and a third innings on the average, leaving the bullpen only eight outs to get. And uh, Jose Quintana, a very valuable guy, and I think he will excel with the Cubs. So you say, well, what's the flip side? What do they get in return? And the answer, a bunch of possibilities. Outfielder Eloy Jimenez, only 20, and one of those multiple tool players who looks like he has some serious power. Uh, last year at South Bend, he drove in 81 but has the flashes, flashes of uh, big home run potential. Time will tell, though, as he progresses in his White Sox minor league days. Uh, another guy with also great potential, right-handed pitcher Dylan Cease. Born in 1995, another youngster, but with giant strikeout totals in the minors, 165 Ks in only 
120 innings pitched, kind of matching the kind of strikeout pitchers that the White Sox got in the trades in which they sent Chris Sale uh, away and looked for young prospects and Adam Eaton as well. In fact, uh, in the three trades, the White Sox get 13 players in return. Let's take a look at a couple more. The White Sox get first baseman Matt Rose, a youngster born in 94, uh, 139 RBIs and 214 minor league games, a guy who can uh, knock in some runs. And then uh, you hope he's fleet of foot, Bryant Fleet Tay, infielder born in 93, but maybe a little bit of a red flag. 24 years old, been in the minors for several years, and only playing in A-ball. That's kind of a head-scratcher. Time will tell how this all shakes out. But a giant trade. Looks like a winner for both teams so far between the Cubs and the Sox. And uh, we'll see what happens. Other possible Sox trades, including closer David Robertson, I can tell you right now, when the White Sox got him from the Yankees, they were not thinking they were going to be dealing him shortly. This was a guy they thought would be their closer for a playoff team. It just didn't shake out that way. And I would say the same is true with third baseman Todd Frazier. When they got him from the Reds, and he was red hot, they thought he was going to be an important RBI man in their lineup. And for whatever reason, that same malady that seems to have affected a couple, three different national leaguers when they come to the American League, they have an extremely low batting average and it just don't seem to be adjusting well to the American League. And uh, sadly, Todd Frazier seems to be in that group and uh, was recently politicking to be the leadoff man in a Sun-Times article I read, which is curious for an RBI guy. But certainly there could be a spot for him. The strong rumor has been the Boston Red Sox. And with Frazier's uppercut right-handed swing, that short porch with the uh, big wall could be knocking some doubles off that and maybe hitting a couple over. Maybe that could help Boston. Certainly that, that's a marketplace opportunity. And then uh, as we continue... Uh, James Shields, once a big game guy, maybe not so much now, with uh, the right setting, maybe as a spot starter or a, a fifth guy, hard to tell, uh, maybe a pitching coach who spotted something on film and, and can correct it, uh, would want to take a flyer on James Shields, but uh, not doing that great with the White Sox at this junction and uh, could be a guy who could be dealt by the next deadline. We'll be back with more after these messages. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. Kim G. Sherman, psychotherapist, Displains Wellness Center. Therapy for individuals, couples, families. Call 847-962-4849. I've known Kim for over 20 years. She is a true professional. And she will help you. Give her a call. Family Dentist, Lawrence Furland, DDS, 109th and Kedzie, crowns, veneers, cleanings, improving your smile. They do a great job. Call 773-233-7044. Excellent work. Impeccable. Call the Family Dentist, 773-233-7044. They did a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. You've got to get to Shelton Fireworks, the world's largest warehouse, off Interstate 94, exit 22B in Porter, Indiana. Row after row of the best fireworks anywhere. 
from the little ones to the grand finales that'll end your show. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, in addition to the 4th of July, just get over there to Shelton Fireworks now. Then you can reload by the time summer comes. Shelton Fireworks, I-94, exit 22B in Portage. We're back in the spotlight in the basement of Chicago Stadium, and it's time to talk baseball. So much attention, properly so, I suppose, has been given to Bo Jackson so far this year, and to Tim Raines for his unfortunate thumb injury, which will keep him out for a while. But what about Ozzie Guillen? He's made this spectacular comeback. Some people thought his career was over, but it isn't. And uh, in rare fashion, but typical Ozzie fashion, we talked to uh, the Wizard in the locker room, and he had plenty to say. I want to be the best uh, I can be, and I think the best for me and for the team is going to be body nice. It's like a second leadoff hitter, but I think we got a few of the guys here that can do better than I do in leadoff. I think we got Joy Cora, Lance Johnson, uh, even Steve Sachs. You know, I think we got a couple guys who can get away and do the job better than I do. I think uh, they have to put the best guy in that position, and I don't think I'm the best guy in that position. Well, you've had some times, though, where you were really excellent at it. I remember about a year and a half ago, it was about July, I showed you a stat. It said, toughest to strike out in the American League. You were on top. And uh, you remember that time? And, uh, and since then, what has evolved, and, and what, what is it going to take for you to get back up there in that position? Oh, I thought you were toughest guy to strike out, and the toughest guy to get a walk, too. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I just get that and got a few strikeouts in baseball and uh, I was kind of put it good because I always put the ball in play. But I think you need a guy to be lead off guy with a uh, Lance Johnson speed or, or Tim Ryan speed, you know, uh, they can run um, better I do. And you know, the strikeout and walk, I don't, I don't mind for a lead off guy, but I think we got to put somebody who can steal more bases than I do. Some people uh, criticized the White Sox defense last year. With you out, there weren't enough double plays. Uh, what are you going to do this year? Do you, do you see the, uh, the double play combination with you and Graybeck uh, being one that can knock out some more double play balls? I just know that about it. I think when Graybeck and myself out, I think uh, the team is going to be a lot better defense. Uh, hopefully, we're, you know, so far they work pretty good. You know, we play real good in Minnesota. We throw a couple of double plays there and over there. And, uh, you know, it should be better with me and, and Gravy back in the in the sack. Some people say once again the White Sox are the team to beat, and this is a very, very, very important year because some people think this is the third year you've been the team to beat. Uh, how do you feel about that? That's great. You know, I think when you break your spring training, you got a chance to win. It's nothing better feel when you got a chance. It's tough when you go to the field. You know, you know how a chance to win, and you hopefully you can win. And when you got a chance to win, they pick you up to win, and it's, it's more excited. It's more. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I like the challenge. Uh, to wrap up, you know, you look for team leaders. You were missing so much of last year. Pudge was missing at the beginning of last year. And uh, now you're both uh, f fresh, at least physically, going into the beginning of this year. Uh, how do you feel Carlton Fisk has gotten over uh, his tough contract negotiation? And will you both be able to be there uh, as uh, emotional team leaders uh, for the beginning and uh, most of the season? Well, since I've been here, Pudge has got a lot of tough time with his contract, but... And that doesn't stop the team, that doesn't stop the uh, um, office, front office people, that doesn't stop him to be playing. Uh, I think with uh, the attitude we bring to the team, it's, uh, it's, a lot, it's real good and, and it's a great attitude. I think we should keep going and uh, hopefully, you know, we win before Pudge be out of Chicago or out of his, this uniform. But we, he meet a lot to this team and, uh, and uh, everybody know, all the teammates know about it, but Leader, I think everybody should be a leader, you know, everybody be his own leader. Uh, I just got there and make it have fun and uh, just play hard and play the right way they're supposed to play. And keep the people wearing those Ozzy Gian t-shirts that your teammates wear, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Oz. We'll be back with more on the Spotlight. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huck Finn is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. Go play at Red Shoes Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski in Alsip, featuring 16 Brunswick Gold Crown pool tables, drop fluorescent lighting fixtures, and the fabulous grade of cloth. Call 
3700 And now video gaming is available at Red Shoes from open till close. And don't forget the Illinois Lottery 2. That's Red Shoe Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski. You've got to get to the sock live Minkowski trivia, alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Great game, great people. Check out the sock. I think you'll be glad you did when you go to my trivia game every other Thursday. 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. Thus tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. You've got to get to Papa Joe's new location, 5900 West 111th Street. Italian beef, tetrazzini. Great pizza, Parmesan, ravioli, and more. All my classic choices. New location, and they can still deliver into the city. Get the Papa Joe's. So if you're over on the west side, stop over at Lulu's because they got everything. I've had Italian beef there. I've had hot dogs there, burgers, the chicken, the gyro, the fish, salads, subs, ribs, and all the soft drinks. It's a Taylor and Ogden, 2200 West. Check out Lulu's. But right now, it's flashback time. A great moment in sports spotlight history. We go back to 1990, Bulls, Pistons, true war. Remember, Detroit was the defending NBA champions, and they got that sinister look knocking Michael down and stuff. Playing it in their own uncontrollable, physical way. In fact, the Pistons seem to control the tempo from the outset, keeping it deliberate, of course. That's where they can play that physical style. Lambeer kept yelling, Jordan's not a god. Here's Lambeer's foul mouth. Oh, Jordan! Calls him not Jordan, you piece of Michael Jordan didn't score a basket until more than six and a half minutes were gone in the game. Scotty Pippen was on the end of enough fast breaks to lead the Bulls in scoring with eight points at the quarter. Bill Cartwright was inside for some early baskets, too. In the second quarter, the Pistons continued to pound the ball inside, too, taking advantage of mismatches like this. 7-2 James Edwards against 6-foot B.J. Armstrong. Every time I see Edwards, I say the Bulls could have had that, man. Also, a second quarter feature, and I use that loosely, is Will Purdue playing his three minutes long enough to alienate the stadium fans into some serious booing. That is a sad situation. On the other hand, Michael Jordan played all 24 minutes of the first half, scoring 19 points in the process, but that would be the end of his success. So it's halftime in the main event between the Bulls and the Pistons. Detroit up 53-51, and violence did erupt in a minor fashion with four minutes and 12 seconds left to go. It was Vinnie Johnson and Bill Cartwright squaring off. Both benches did not empty, though. Peace was restored fairly quickly, and the Bulls actually used it as an inspiration, went on a run as they were trailing by eight at the time, and closed the gap to the single basket at which they trail right now. Anytime Michael Jordan takes a spill, it's a scary moment at the stadium, that is. In the third quarter, John Sally's legs got tangled up with MJ's. Fortunately, everyone was all right, but I'm telling you, 19,000 had their hearts in their throats for a while, and it wasn't funny. Isaiah Thomas, as he so often does in games at the stadium, gets hot. It happened here with this quick baseline move that he makes against John Paxson. Isaiah, of course, was fouled. He ended up in the media's lap. He chose not to take a slap, as he did in that Sunday game against the Lakers. The game was airtight, and the Lovables were performing enthusiastic. Maybe the most significant thing about the third quarter was that Michael Jordan was allowed to take a major rest, and that could be a key to this fourth quarter. Also, there was a wild collision as John Paxson and his favorite piston went out of bounds, knocked the fan down and caused quite a commotion, but everything seemed to be okay. In a game that made you feel like you played in it, it was draining. Detroit beat the Bulls 107 to 95. The fourth quarter was taken over by Isaiah Thomas, who finished with a piston high 26 points. Michael Jordan had 32 to lead all scorers, but was not the force that Isaiah was. Necessarily take it over. Our basketball team played well. We had a total effort tonight, one through 12. Uh, everybody contributed. Everybody played well. People came in off the bench um, and did a good job. Isaiah, does it give you a little additive? 
satisfaction that you not only win here, but you kind of break a big streak for them. I and mean, they hadn't lost in, what, 15 straight games in this building. Um, glad we won. <laughs> Were you aware at all of the streak? I mean, it is a significant one. No, I wasn't aware of it. Um, it's like during the course of the season, you, you basically just keep track of yourself and you try to keep focused on your own basketball team and try to make sure that your own basketball team keeps improving and keeps gelling and keep doing the things that you want to do uh, if you start constantly. Uh, one more touch of base with the Chicago Bulls. They are the champions, and we think we should talk to the coach who is certainly in charge of trying to keep this ship on track as they go for five titles in seven years. Phil gave some obligatory compliments to some of the minor league players in camp, but it was time to talk about the main guys. Who's looking good so far? We're happier because of uh, the fact that you know, we didn't anticipate Harper or Luke uh, or Tony, or maybe Scotty to go full practices, and everybody's been able to complete a practice. Uh, Scotty took off the last uh, full court segment of practice today, but other than that, everybody's been able to go the whole practice. So with all the titles and adulation, how do you keep this team hungry? Well, we allow their own competitive juices to supply that. The fact that they want to win, and uh, you know, we put them on different teams, make them play against each other, and that's enough to do it because. Uh, there's a lot of pecking order on this ball club. Everybody wants to be the top dog, even though you know it's kind of designated who our top dog is. Everybody wants to unseat him. When do you intend to have your first referee scrimmage? Phil? Wednesday night. Phil, last year, does, does Dennis Rahman have the same intensity and focus that he had? At, do you see any distractions from him? No, he's still playing hard. I think Dennis, of all the players, has probably you know been away from basketball the longest. I doubt if he picked the ball up in the off season. So just the basketball skills of handling the ball, passing, shooting, those things are still Dennis's uh, uh, Kelly's uh, heel right now. He's got to work at that, and uh, you know, he'll be there. But defensively, rebounding-wise, he's right on target. Chuck, the role that Judd Bush plays for you on most teams, they usually have rookies or guys with not that much experience in that role. How, how important is it for you to have a veteran in that spot, knowing, having someone that you can rely on uh, to fill those minutes whenever you need them? Well, you know, sometimes uh, Judd gets overlooked in the first rotation of substitutions, but we know that if things are going poorly for us on the floor, we need an input, a uh, shot of adrenaline that Judd can give that to us because he's a solid player. The other thing he can do, he can play three positions um, and defend three positions, which gives him an opportunity to go in and play sometimes a power forward, and then his three-point shooting becomes a, a potent weapon for us. That's the thing that's made it most important in Judd's transition to the kind of player he is now is the fact that he's become a very good three-point shooter. His execution's always been great, and he's been called Mr. Fundamental as a nickname, and you know he brings that to practice every day, and that helps us out. How much are you looking for improvement from a guy like Dickie Simpkins here in camp and maybe even a Jason Caffey over last year? Well, these are the young men that uh, you know, really look forward to improvement. Uh, you know, because every year they're learning more skills in the NBA. They're learning what they can and can't do every day on the court. Uh, Dickie's become a pro. He's got an idea what it means to become a professional and come to work every day and do the things right and attending uh, the small details of what it takes to be a player. Uh, Jason, uh, great abilities and a uh, terrific athlete, is still learning that professional attitude and how to you know, motivate himself every day in practice so he continues to get better. What, but what these two players should bring some energy to us, uh, you know, from the bench in which uh, we need somebody to come out and inspire us or play hard. You've got to get the Jacks. 33-25, Ridge Road in Lansing. Trivia every Tuesday at 7 p.m. A very intense competitive game. Any of half a dozen teams can win. My game show at Oliver's gets better and better. At 6100 West 159th Street in Oak Forest. Live trivia, alternate Thursdays at 7 p.m. Have great food, great drink, and great trivia at Oliver's. Perfect pitch auto repair at 108th and Kedzie is great. Tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They do a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. They're quick, and they don't charge an arm and a leg. Perfect pitch auto repair, 108th and Kedzie. Trivia will be at the Sock. Alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road, great food, great drink, great people. Everything great.
Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. All shows are now Monday at 6 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. We're back on the spotlight, and of course we'll analyze the Minnesota game in a moment, but first the game against Tampa Sunday, Easter Sunday, left many fans disgruntled, giving up uh, good chunks of their family holiday to see what they felt was a disappointing 3-3 tie with the Lightning. We'll talk to a couple of players about it right now. By the way, my sentiments were similar. Yeah, they, they always gave us a lot of grit. There's no question about it. Uh, they, they're a hard-working team, and I know we never take them lightly. There's no question. Now, we really haven't beat them real, except that one 5 nothing at home. But we knew they were going to come up and work hard, and, and, and they played a little different. They didn't have any pressure. They don't have really have anywhere to go. They just want to get some points on the board, and uh, they play well to us. They, they lock us in tonight. In the final week of the season, I would think your lines would be fairly stabilized. But now we see uh, Larmer leave Roenick for, for all practical purposes. Uh, how, how do you see that continuing uh, into the playoff? Well, that's a coach's the decision, you know, and wh whoever yeah. plays. And you just hope that's the best lineup you got out there. And, uh, I mean, that's no question. I, we pretty much used to play with everybody right now. You wouldn't be affected if uh, some of your line mates moved elsewhere? Well, I just, just got to play with somebody else. That's the only thing. I mean, uh, Daryl makes the lines, and then and that's what he feels that the best lines are going to go that time. I don't think we played bad at all in the last 10 days. Today was the only day we were flat. Makes you think we played bad hockey in the last couple of weeks. No, I'd say at home, though, it looks like you guys have struggled at times, particularly well, early. We're not, we're not getting prepared to play. I mean, we, we feel we come into this building and we, we can have an easy win. You know, that's not the case. You know, we have to come in here, we have to work hard, just as hard as we do on the road. I mean, uh, just because we're in here doesn't mean we're going to win the game. That's kind of the attitude that we've had uh, the last couple of games. So that might be the one thing then, huh? I guess. This is played you pretty tough this year. Is this, is, you know, is this a credit to them or? Of course, they're a hard-working team. You know, they have a lot of spunk. They have a lot of pride. A lot of them have a second chance in the NHL, and uh, they're making use of it. Some of them even third chances, so. You know, they're trying to make the best of it and they're working hard. Part of the way your club has been analyzed recently going into the playoffs is probably a byproduct of being a Stanley Cup finalist. Uh, I would think you guys would be uh, accustomed to, to the pressure that goes along with that by now. Yeah, we should, but I mean, we shouldn't have to worry about that kind of pressure. We have to uh, make sure we, we just worry about playing our own game and working hard and, and uh, trying to, uh, to scrounge out every point possible. And, uh, you know, we've just we've let a couple of games go, but... You've got to get to Lulu's. Some of my best friends, technical people, go there. Italian beef, hot dogs, burgers, chicken, gyros, fish, salad, subs, and ribs. It's a Taylor in Ogden, 2200 West. It's easy to find and great to eat. Lulu's. This week's show has been brought to you by the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Shop. They do it all at 108th and Kedzie. Huck Finn, a great wide-ranging menu, along with donuts and ice cream. Open 24 hours at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero. In print graphics, leaders in booklet, perfect bound, saddle stitch. Very competitive pricing. Call 708-396-1010.